gosh, it looks wild on the camera. Look, it's Haroldini Potter. We're ready. We're ready for some Wizards Unite. Okay, so Constance says, you're back. Have you given any more thought to my proposal? I mean, your proposal? Constance, you aren't pitching some office secret Santa. You're talking about violating the international statute of secrecy and revealing the existence of magic to muggles. In case you've forgotten, that's the very thing we've been working to avoid. Hermione, you tell her, you tell her. That law was created hundreds of years ago, back when witch hunts were still a thing. Muggles have evolved past that. Don't you think they deserve a second chance? Okay, so when Jeff and I accidentally ordered a full pitcher of beer for just the two of us and started talking about Constance Pickering, why is Constance the way that she is? And we don't really know much about her father. We have heard her mention her mother and her grandfather and some siblings. What if her dad was a muggle? And I mean, I don't know that we're actually gonna get Constance's backstory, but what if her dad was a muggle and something happened to him and it was this whole thing and I don't know, I don't know. There's, there's lots of questions I have about Constance. It's too risky. Even if muggles welcomed witches and wizards with open arms, there's no guarantee wizarding society would do the same. What if another Grindelwald or Voldemort rose to popularity or power? Oh my gosh. You mean like Constance Pickering? I hadn't thought of that. But there's no guarantee that would happen and think of all the good we could do. With the help of our magic and potions, muggles could live healthier, happier lives. That's not so wrong, is it? Constance is so manipulative. <laughs> Harry, Hermione, you both grew up in non-magical households. Here she goes. See, this girl, she got rid of Ron on purpose. You have to admit that magic could improve muggles' lives in countless ways. I mean, they don't even have a cure for the common cold for Merlin's sake. I understand where you're coming from, Constance. There have been times where I wished I could step in and help too. But it's safer for everyone if the muggle and wizarding worlds stay separate. Harry's right, the belief that wizards should rule over muggles didn't die with Voldemort. What if mixing the two worlds emboldened wizarding supremacists to oppress muggles? Wizards would face dangers too. What if a muggle government forced wizards into service or conscripted them to fight their wars? So we should just let muggles suffer when one spell could possibly change their lives for the better? One spell could just as easily change their lives for the worse. Yeah, Connie, mm -mm. people might benefit. I don't know. I'm like, I'm conflicted right now. People might benefit in the short term, but you have to think of the potential long-term consequences, Constance. The best thing we can do for muggles is to preserve the statute of secrecy, combat, intol combat intolerance, and keep the peace. I mean, Hermione is clearly smarter than Constance. I'm not gonna lie, she is, so like, I can't, can't with her. If you won't listen to me, Hermione, then listen to the muggles themselves. What, you just have like a pocket full of muggles to show her, like what? <laughs> they want magic in their lives. They want things only magic can get them. I've seen it. Seen it with your legilimency, you mean? You are a legilimens, aren't you, Constance? I mean, yeah. That's right. For as long as I can remember, I've been able to peek into others' minds. I realized early on that my gift put me in a unique position to manipulate people. No, <laughs> to know what people want most and that my purpose in life is to help them get it. What people want and what they need can be two very different things. Our volunteers may have wanted to experience what it was like to be the chosen one, but unleashing dangerous adversaries that put them and others in danger wasn't in their, let alone anyone else's best interests. You claim to genuinely want to help people, Constance, but if you hurt or endanger innocent people in the process, are you really helping? Or are you just making things worse? <laughs> and Constance goes, 
I thought I could have her. No. <laughs> no, Hermione would not be taken down by Constance Pickering. To think that the entire time Constance was supposedly trying to protect the international statute of secrecy, she was in actuality plotting to expose the existence of magic to muggles. Yeah. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Is it? I mean, I don't know. It's incredibly naive, that's what it is. Wait, what's happening? Even so, I get where she's coming from. <laughs> Harry Potter is like, yeah, I get where she's coming from. I've thought about what it'd be like if I could use my magic to help those without it and I'm not alone. I've heard whispers around the office from coworkers who sympathize with Constance. That's gonna be me, that's me. And some of y'all, although I do think that Constance is, uh, no, we should not c trust Constance with this decision. It's one thing to sympathize with her desire to help muggles and another to actively support her efforts to destroy the international statute of secrecy. We need to take care that the latter isn't happening or we could run into trouble. The curse breakers are close to freeing Penelope Folly from the portrait Gareth Greengrass sealed her in. You know, I think, even though I think I would want to be a professor in the wizarding world, I actually think I would want to be a curse breaker. I think that would be super cool to do. Do you really think Grim Folly will turn himself in once she's been freed? Grimm's never lied to us before, though I wonder why he hasn't shown up already. Given how desperate he was to get Penelope back, you'd think he'd want to see her as soon as we found her. This is stressing me out. Where is Grimm? Is Constance real? Is she doing a, is Grimm Polly juiced as her? <laughs> no, he probably hoped it would incentivize us to save Penelope. Okay, well maybe Grimm is fine and he'll show up right at the right moment. Maybe, but he had to know that we weren't just going to leave her in that portrait. I suppose we'll be able to ask him soon enough, won't we? <gasps> oh, Calamity Ender! Oh no, this can't go on forever, no! <laughs> Why can't it go on forever? Hermione tells me, another chunk of your memories have returned, that's great news, Ron! Yeah, it felt like a light that had been extinguished suddenly got reignited. My head hardly feels fuzzy at all anymore. That's a relief. At this rate, you might completely regain your memories by the end of this surge. I hope not. My anniversary is coming up. If I'm back to normal, I won't have an excuse to give Hermione when I inevitably forget. Ron? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> Ron. <laughs> oh gosh, Ronald. All right, here we go. I came as soon as I got word that Penelope Folly had been freed from her portrait. Is that her in the hospital bed? Is she all right? The healers say she's disoriented from the curse and under the effects of a silencing charm, but otherwise healthy. Uh-oh. That's a relief, isn't it? I imagine Grim Folly will be ecstatic. Speaking of Grim, have there been any signs of him? Not yet. You don't think he's gotten cold feet, do you? <gasps> Wait a moment. Is that? There's no picture of Grim! What does he look like? What does Grim look like? <laughs> Somebody send me a picture of Grimm! Come now, Potter. You should know I always keep my promises. After all, I promised I'd do everything I could to find Nell, didn't I? But that's enough of that. I imagine you have some questions for me. What does Grimm? 